This is Kelanghapi Road, central Auckland. Most people call it K Road. My name is Six. For many years, K Road was my home. I was homeless. Now I publish the K Road Chronicle, a newspaper that gives street people their own voice. Raymond is a support worker helping look after the street community on K Road. He understands their struggles from personal experience. He used to be called Razor, and for six years, a small space outside a city cafe was his home. Why would you choose to sleep uphill? I mean, that's why I slept on K Road, because it's at the top. You don't have to walk anywhere. I hate hills. <laughs> Why'd you choose this spot? A few reasons. Really reason, first reason being this was too far for the father to come up with us yeah, that's true. and rob us while we're asleep. Yeah. Um, the other reason was because it's well sheltered. Yeah. Uh, this was home for about six years. So we used to put the two seats together up here, put cardboard in there, like box it off, like a coffin, mm. so, so to speak. So because it was a windbreaker. And um, yeah, put the blanket over us and put our belongings in our bag for a pillow. Yeah. And then, um, uh, yeah, and that's how we slept. I just come here and like, um, this was my space of letting it all go under my blanket, screaming, yeah. what the fuck's going on here? What are you doing? Ah! And then pull the blanket down your bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. I don't think people really understand the toll it takes on your mental health to be homeless. I mean, my well-being, my, my um, way of thinking about the world. I thought the world had given up on me, where I just gave up on myself. Stepping away from who Razor was to who Raymond is, yeah. um, that's how I found myself again, using my name Raymond. Yeah. They call me Razor no more. I'm not that person. I'm Raymond. When I first met Raymond, he was volunteering as a peer support worker for LifeWise. LifeWise is a community organisation providing fundamental services for the street community. Had a job, had a um, partner, had a dog, had a house, everything going fine in my life. You're a machine operator yeah. in trade, yeah? Yeah, machine, um, a professional machine operator. Yeah. Buying bulldozers and diggers and stuff like that. So what was the lowest point for you? I uh, had, a, had a loss in my, fam in my life uh, that was what well, sort of like took me to a tipping point. And uh, yeah. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Uh, so I lost my mum. Uh, she was my best friend. She was my world. She was my everything. Um, we done lost so much shit together. Mm. And that's about the time you got involved with narcotics, is that correct? Yeah, heavily. Methamphetamine. I've never ever. But um, I asked a, a final member, man, I'm hurting so much, how can I, how can I get rid of this hurt, you know? And I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done that. I should have just taken on pain. Pipe or the needle? Pipe. Oh yeah, took it on with the pipe. So I introduced the pipe. The same, uh, the same final member introduced um, how it could harden up. <laughs> so I started dealing um, with different families, gangs, um, to learn things. But it wasn't dealing that led to a stint in prison. Do you mind telling me more about what led to jail? When my mum passed away in 2008, I lost my partner and everything at 2010. Uh, Ex-partner. Um, telling me she had um, gone to Whakatane and then I pull into the street randomly and seen her car there and, and then of course um, she wasn't in Whakatane. So there was a low point finding out that after 13 years of relationship, uh, yeah, so then I, I ended up in jail after doing what I'd done there. Can you say what you did? Uh, yeah, smashed up her house, smashed up the car, smashed up her boyfriend, run him over, got done with a um, weapon. Never been done ever before. Mm. And 35 going to jail to my family, I was an embarrassment, I felt. So anyway, got out of jail and had nowhere to go come straight to the streets. But now you've come full circle. Yeah. Now you're actually in housing. Yes. 
your peer support, you're helping others through their journey. Yep. Tell me about your peer support work. Oh, my peer support work, far up. Well, because of when I look back on when I was on the streets, I want to make a change. When I look at the, the whānau on the streets, there's Razor. I need to bring him off the concrete. I need to bring her off the concrete. And uh, to do that, since I've been here, has been so rewarding inside. Oh, just see, see what you've been up to lately, PJ. Oh, it's hustling around town. Oh. And been quite depressed lately. Oh. Man, struggling, food and that. Financially can't uh, probably support myself. On that note, eh? Like, you can have a kid for your uh, MSD, because they're there for us, you know, like we are. You know, like life wises. So, yeah, um, maybe later on we can, um, I can take you down there and sort it out for you. I'll yep. play P and all that. Yeah, all right? So, pick yourself up and uh, everything will be all right. Positive vibes, eh? Bye bye. Yep. PJ was staying in temporary accommodation, but has recently been housed. This brings new challenges. I actually got accommodation. It's all good having a roof over here, but still need support for like getting a job and that, you know. So I really want to go to work. Construction, concreting, you name it, anything. As long as it's not dishwashing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't like dishwashing. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I'm actually uh, going to look at the job and only hunger um, tomorrow. My partner, my partner is going to take me out there, and um, it's a recycle company, and I'm a master sorter. So, I hope, hopefully, things will go my way, and um, I get that job. Putting in my data of what I've done for the day. I've um, been out, I've done my walk, and I've seen some whānau to see what their needs are. PJ, what's the lot to be housed, bro? Congratulations. Awesome. Give me five. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. good, good, bro. Thank you. There's nobody from the office that can go down there. Well, I think so, anyway. Mm. That uh, could come from the office and go down there and talk to the whānau and, uh, and get that trust, mm. you know, build that trust. It takes ages, you know. Uh, with me, it's sort of like, nah, got their trust as soon as they see me. And if I have to, I'll talk on their level. So we do all those uh, wraparound support things, you know, uh, to uplift our whānau. That's what's, that's what's good about being on this side of things, you know, um, working and see what we can do for the whānau to pick them up, uh, be better people, you know? A bit of themselves, they feel a lot better than coming from the concrete, because yeah, they'd be tough to be on the concrete, you know? Tough as the concrete to live out here. But um, we try and move them away from that. Um, that's, a, that's a different struggle thing from the concrete. But you, I get from the hard yards, man. I, mean, I remember coming out during COVID, you guys were out there on the street, mm. and you were you know, giving people food, you were helping people get accommodation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a big job saving the world. Do you find you take on board other people's problems? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My first year, I got burnt out by not uh, setting boundaries mm. because boundaries is what we uh, we learn later on. And you've got to go through the hard yards. Yeah. But what I, what I say is to keep those boundaries, don't take your work home because mm. it gets heavy putting um, their, you know, that person's uh, tucky and that person's tucky. Well, what I mean is their person's problems all their problems as well, putting it in your backpack with all your problems. Quite heavy. Raymond has recently had a big change in his life. You've got your family back. Yeah, I have um, got my son back. Um, he's the, he was the reason I came off the streets the first time uh, when he was born. At the age of 40, I had my first child and I was so excited. Mm. Um, but I came off the streets straight away and I was so happy. Mm. I was the happiest man in the world. And shortly after, he was also reunited with his daughter. It was my daughter's first day of school today. I didn't want to leave the grounds. I couldn't wait to come back to pick her up <laughs> and find out what she had learned. <laughs> and to share with these moments is just, man, it's, it's, um, 
um, heart filling. They are now living in a motel, which isn't ideal, but at least they are all together. And hopefully, they'll be permanently housed soon. We're doing the best we can. There's so many people um, in line as well for housing, and um, to me, that's just not on. There's a lot of families here uh, that are in the same situation. Three children in, in a room like this, both parents. And you could, you know, you could imagine that, nah, this is not uh, what we want, what they, what they want for their children or themselves. But they're in a situation where they just can't make a difference. I'm just blessed that I've just got them. Eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>